Hello, this is a Photoshop CS4 tutorial from Andrew Klein. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to be using both Photoshop CS4 and Autodesk Maya 2009. Uh, the purpose of this tutorial is to show us how we can bring an object from Maya into Photoshop and use some of the basic painting features to fix an already created texture. Uh, we see right now we're, we're in Maya and uh, there's a couch model. Uh, the model has already been UV'd, we can see here in the UV text editor, the layout for the couch. Uh, and you'll notice as well, it's uh, rather flatly laid out with uh, a pretty even texture application from a pattern fill going straight across this. Well, while that works okay, the problem that uh, is going to arise from an application like this uh, is that areas along the seams of the couch, such as we see right here, are going to have uh, some mismatch in texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this couch into Photoshop using the new 3D features. Uh, and we're going to load in the texture and try and paint out some of those seam elements. Well, the first step with this is uh, we're going to select our couch. And I'm going to go to File and choose Export Selection and go to my Options box. Uh, when the Options box pops up, uh, I'm going to choose OBJ as my export option. And I can leave all the options as default, quite honestly. I'll go to Export Selection. and I'm just going to put this in my Couch Demo folder here. Uh, I'm going to call this very simply Couch and save it as an OBJ. So I have now exported out the model. Uh, the texture has already been saved, and that is in the desktop location that uh, it's obviously loading from correctly here. Uh, so we're going to open both of those into Photoshop CS4. Uh, I'm switching over to Photoshop. You see Maya is open in the background. Uh, I'm going to go into Photoshop File and choose New. Uh, and I'm going to make a new image. Uh, now, your image size here um, should be relatively large um, to accommodate all of your screen space at the very least. And what I'm going to do actually, the size of my monitor is 1680 by 1050. That's my resolution. So since I'm not actually painting on the document, I'm just trying to paint a 3D model that exists uh, inside the confines of that document. Uh, the document that I'm making, as you see here, is obviously going to be the same size as my screen space. So I'll just call this document Couch Texture space, but that's arbitrary. My resolution 72 dpi, color mode RGB 8-bit, and I'll hit OK. I'm going to hit F to enter the full screen mode. And in the full screen mode, uh, I'm going to go to the new 3D palette. And under Show All Menu Items, which is going to reveal some extra items for me, the very top option is uh, called New Layer from 3D File. Now you'll notice in, in Photoshop CS4 we have layers. Currently I just have a background layer. Uh, there's also a 3D menu, which um, under Windows I've uh, made sure to bring out my 3D section. Uh, and I have this displayed, kind of docked in the same section as my layers. Well, under New Layer from 3D File, I'm going to be able to go in and choose the location where I saved my OBJ. And you'll notice that I have a couple of readable file formats, including a 3D Studio or Wavefront OBJ. And we're going to be using Wavefront OBJ for this. I will bring in the couch.obj file and hit open. Uh, you'll notice here that the couch is now going to open in 3D space. And it actually just appears as a layer. Well, what we're going to do is uh, first of all look at how to manipulate around the space and how to edit this and bring the texture in. You'll notice additions in the toolbar along the left side of the screen. Uh, a couple of tools have been added to have, uh, help control rotations in 3D space. Very specifically, there's a new 3D rotate tool, uh, the hotkey for which is the letter K. Uh, you can find it right underneath your normal shape tools. So if I click K, I'm going to get a new 3D rotator. With this, 
tool. I don't even have to click on that tool itself. I can click anywhere in my 3D space, and if I click, I can rotate this object around. By using the scale box in the manipulator, I can scale this up and down by pushing my cursor forward and backwards, my mouse up and down. I can use again, the rotate tool or this pan tool to move my object around. Uh, and with all this, I pretty much have all the tools necessary uh, to begin my texturing. Well, one thing you'll notice about this is that every manipulation I do actually adds to my history. So just keep that in mind as you're working on your uh, projects. Now I still have to load in my texture and you'll notice that in my layers palette I have textures which I can turn on and off with my same little icon visibility that allows me to turn on and off things like the background or my new 3D layer. Well, I'm going to go into the new 3D menu set. And there's actually several options here to examine. Uh, there's essentially four options across the top of this menu. Uh, the first one is a sort of a scene hierarchy. And we can leave all of the scene hierarchy elements here in place for the moment. But you can actually access the other settings through the scene hierarchy as well. So for instance, I can access the mesh settings by choosing the mesh button, which is the second box. Um, or I can choose the exact same thing in the hierarchy. Uh, I can go straight to the texture through the top section, or I can hit it in the hierarchy. Well, a couple of things worth editing here. Um, I'm actually going to go into the texture, sec uh, texture section, which um, you'll notice there's going to be two icons in the hierarchy. One is shaped like a little cylinder. That is the section for your mesh. Uh, the other one, which looks like a little square, that's the section for your texture. Well, we're currently going to be painting the diffuse texture. That is the color texture. So in diffuse, uh, I'm going to click on the section, which allows me to load a new texture right next to diffuse. And I'm going to choose load texture. From this, it's going to pop up a demo or dialog box where I can come in and choose the uh, texture from my couch demo, which is the couch color map that we saw previously. And without any more effort, that color map is now going to be present right on our texture in 3D space. Well, before we actually get going painting on this and using this to overpaint our seams, uh, I do want to look at a couple of the other features that might help this uh, work. And you'll notice that back in Maya, everything looks a little bit brighter than it does inside Photoshop. And that just has to do with the material settings that are here. Uh, you'll notice that my texture and material has a couple of environment variables. Uh, I can up the ambient brightness of my couch. Makes it a little bit brighter to see. I can up my specularity or even make my specularity red. You see a little red highlight here. But honestly, I don't feel we need that for now. There's a self-illumination dialog box, and turning this obviously all the way up is going to make my couch glow. But if you're having a hard time seeing it, you want to adjust the contrast range on your screen, you can give a little bit of self-illumination just for a preview. Uh, there are glossiness settings and shininess settings. And these can be used to control uh, how your highlight works on the couch. Um, and I'm not really concerned too much about this because I really care what it looks like in Maya. But I will use these settings to maybe help me be able to see my surface a little bit better. Um, with that, this will end the uh, first video. Uh, in the second video, we're actually going to take a look at how to overpaint the seams that we see right here. So stay tuned for video two.